Okay, everyone, this is what we're calling Big Eight. It's a false flag narrative that's going to rise up and really begin to come on the narrative. And here's why. They have outrun their usefulness for uh, the Lord Manchurian candidate. And here is the reason they're going to begin to pivot. Now, they may play this out all the way into 24. They may play this out just for the next little while until there's some unfortunate accident that begins to strike him or something begins to rapidly manifest either in his body or around the overwhelming evidence that continues to surmount and come out about what's going on. In addition to this, you're going to also see more of the false flag narrative. Let me explain. When you've got the evil lizard wicked overlords that are scumbag mafia slime ball leaders over in a place called Davos, Switzerland, that's where you're going to begin to see more and more of a inducing of wave after wave of a false flag narrative. What does this mean? What I mean is you're gonna see more crisis, both socially, economically, in all these other arenas. And you gotta remember this, it is a false flag crisis. So what this also recognized, or, or you should recognize it as, is this such as the loss of life, which is horrible. And you begin to see this through uh, the, when you have people that go in and they begin to do terrible things where they, they open fire, so to speak. And I hope you pick up my meaning. You're going to see more and more of this that begins to transpire. And it is all a false flag narrative. Some of it will be real and then it will be manufactured and utilized through the news cycle for their own purposes. In addition to this, there's going to come many more avenues of of, of difficulty that will try to bring things to a screeching halt, both in the U.S. economy and around the world. Now, here's I have so much good news to give you also. Please hear me, okay? This is something, and I heard these words. I heard the words bite. It's bite, okay? So they won't they won't waste a good crisis. They'll never do that. And so part of this that's going to continue rapidly coming on the scene is going to be a deflection. Amazingly enough, they're going to use it as a deflection so they can continue doing whatever they want to do and use it through their news cycle and narrative. Now, the good news that I sense powerfully in the spirit of the Lord is that there's going to be a confrontation. You're going to see the veil peeled back. You're going to see more and more of the veil peeled back on these global slime ball elites that are part of the pervert mafia because all of them, honestly, let's just be honest. If you're participating in something that's going to put the entire culture under your thumb or something that's going to cause the entire civilization to go under your grasp, so to speak, by these global elite whatever. Here's what's going on there. They're a bunch of perverts. It's the pervert mafia. We like to say that. They're the ones that like to go, yoo-hoo, we're getting in your schools. Yoo-hoo, we're getting in all these other arenas. The pervert mafia, here we come. Pervert brigade. And, you know, you can't, you can still, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still, you know what it is. Now, Here's what I want to say to you, is that the Lord is calling people to stand up in great capacity. And the Lord is calling people to rise up and be counted with everything the Lord has marked you for. Many of you are going to hear the times and seasons you're living in with a great urgency, with a great expectancy. God is calling you to stand up and begin to take territory to begin to take more territory than ever before. Listen, Jesus is calling you to rise up. And many people, <clears throat> many people do not believe that there's some of these things happening. Now it's going to, this, this fight, this global issue is going to come to your doorstep. It's coming to your doorstep. But the good news is, you're here. You were born for this time. God has marked you. God has anointed you. God has brought great, great uh, hope to many people that have a now word. And so again, here's the word of the Lord. Many things that are going to unfold this year are going to be part of justice. People say, oh my goodness, I, you know, God bring justice, bring justice. And I want to remind you that the reason the Lord has not released such intense justice just uh, even sooner is because the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. It's going to be an impact on many, many different people. The impact is going to be on many, many people. And it's going to be on the righteous, the unrighteous. It's going to be all around us, okay? 
But the good news is the same thing happened in Egypt. It was dark in Egypt, but it was light in Goshen. And God is not leaving you. He's not forsaking you. He's going to bring such an expected end for you with great victory and great assignment that I have to tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto you right now that he's not going to leave you and he's not going to forsake you. The best days of the real church are here. This is the opportunity. We're in the best days of the real church right now where the Spirit of the Lord is raising up what I call the red church. The red church is the blood-bought believers that don't shrink back, but they press in to the high call of God. Now, you're going to begin to see this. This is a, a word that I have for many different leaders in the body of Christ, and I'm talking global influencers, and you're going to see some awesome things in the next coming months. I have such a strong word about this, but you're going to begin to see a tremendous unification of platforms and unlikely alliances. This is what the Lord told me in 2019. The Lord began to speak to me that there would be, and, and I, we prophesied this, the Lord prophesied it to us, so we're just sharing what we know, we believe the Lord has shared, and that's this, is that many new revivalists will stand up. They will offend the institution. They're going to bring a shaking to the institution. And you're going to see this as it came out with, how could we, how could we describe this the best? It's going to be business leaders that begin to stand up and they will begin to preach and, and shout to the institution, the ivory towers of society, and they will bring a revival because they will not want to be pushed into the same areas that, that have been been, how can we say, marshaled into wickedness by these elite systems. Now we're going to see this more and more, and you're seeing this already in the culture where there are business leaders standing up and saying, hey, if the church ain't doing it, we're going to bring revival. It won't look like how the church wants it to look, but we're going to bring revival anyway. And so in this same picture, let me say something really strong about this. God is going to make a way where there's going to be supernatural ability, supernatural ways and means where there's going to be such a, a, a unique increase that comes on individuals that will not shrink back. The currency of this season is boldness. The currency of this season is obedience. The currency of this season is to be right where God placed you. And this is what the Lord is saying to you. He's placing you in a very pivotal position for a pivotal time. Now, I have a sense about something. Let me try to say this. I'm going to say this the best I can for us today. There is a very powerful anointing that has been released already. It's here. The, the powerful anointing is going to manifest in the powerful twos. It's going to manifest in unlikely alliances. It's going to manifest in many people that will just simply be humble, boldness with humility, and God's going to bring the roar to the front line of this contention, this fight. And you're going to begin to now see such strength rising and victory that begins to shake the institution in the church, the government, the marketplace, entertainment, and all of it, and God's going to bring it out. You're going to see such exposure, but in the middle of this exposure, the false flags will be their defense. So here's, I'm going to try to say this the best I can. This is something that's important. What I sense powerfully that's coming is many people are so trying to say who's going to get into office next, where this is going. I believe they're going to try and bring out a change of the guard somewhere in this narrative, a change of the guard of the highest office of the land. In the middle of it all, in the middle of it all, there's going to be a great exposure and a loss of power with these slimeball global elites that meet together in this thing called the economic forum. You're going to see a loss of power, even though it won't appear that way. There's going to be a shaking with it. You're going to see a loss of power with some of this. And the response will be the distraction narrative of false flags. What do I mean by that? And I'm going to, I need to say this even clearer. You're going to see distraction narratives hit the news. You're going to see sensationalism hit the news. You're going to see sacrificial lambs, goats, so to speak, of some celebrities that get pushed out onto the forefront and they will become the talk of the town. They'll become the talk of the day. Celebrities will take a dive, so to speak, so they can deflect from the narrative of the scumbag mafia, the slimeball dirtbags that are, that are getting their their information drug out into the light, you're going to see celebrities take a dive. 
you're going to see more and more of this begin to happen. And as this begins to rapidly come on the scene, they're trying to cover over and stop a tsunami of a roar in 24. And the roar in 24 is what the Lord is saying, that a roar will come in 24. I believe that 23 is going to be strange. There's going to be difficulty in 23. You're going to see a shaking in all the difficult challenges that will begin to rapidly come across the horizon and landscape. And what I mean by that is it's going to be economic. It's going to be natural disaster. There's going to be many of these things that begin to come to the scene. And they're going to utilize many of these different tragedies. Tragedies will be many of the words we see over this season and the following tragic events tragic upon tragic and then when those happen they will use them as a false flag narrative to cover up their evil misdeeds that's going to be part of the issue there tragedies will be used to cover over as a false flag narrative what's coming but in the middle of it all i hear the spirit of the lord saying look up because there's not only redemption that's coming but there's another round there's another round that's coming and another round, what do I mean by it's coming? Another round will be indeed the fact that the sons and daughters of light and righteousness will stand up. And you're going to see a right sizing both in the prophetic. You're going to see a right sizing now in the prophetic. And it's going to take a season or two. Okay? A right sizing is part of what this means. This is going to happen there. You're going to see an economic right sizing, a miraculous shaking of economy. It's going to look bad, bad, bad. Darkness will cover the land. And then there's going to be a light in Goshen that begins to rise up. Okay. The food industry will be attacked as it already has been. We prophesied in 2020, Spirit of the Lord prophesied to us that there would be food shortages and food narratives. Now I believe, and I'm going to say this clearly, so pray with me and discern this, okay? Just because I say it doesn't mean that you don't discern it. You need to stick with the Word of God. You need to discern what the Lord is saying and not just run away with anything I say or anybody else says. You must stay with the written Word of God, stay in faith, and discern the prophets, okay? Discern them, all right? So here's what I sense. I heard the words poisoning of the food poisoning of the food, that there's going to be something they begin to place into the food system. Now, poison might be a strong word, but there's something they're going to do to induce a, a new thing in food, all right? And so here's what we have to say, though. The Lord is our, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down between, in green pastures. The Lord prepares a table for the midst of you in the presence of your enemies. God is going to make such a way for you. I believe all of this is going to get uncovered. I believe justice and a judgment will come against, uh, what's his name? Pervy Gates. Isn't that his name? Yeah. Yoo-hoo! Buying all the land up. Woo! You know, I think <laughs> there's going to be, there's going to be a complete and total judgment or justice that comes there as well. Now, this whole, this whole thing, one of the signs we're going to see is more and more of this this perversion. You know, the pervert island where everybody went there, did all the stuff, the things. <laughs> I want to tell you, that is going to have a list that has already been leaked here and there. But I'm telling you, that's going to hit mainstream. And there's another one after that that's coming. It's going to be strong. And it's going to be very, very clear. There's going to be so much of this that all they have left to do is begin to bring false flag narratives. And if necessary, they'll bring out all they can to shake and shake loose the people of God by this false flag narrative. Now, I've got good news for you. And here's the good news. For those that love the Lord, those that fear the Lord, God always provides not only a way of escape, but great provision in the middle of darkness. Not one time in Scripture, ever, not one time in Scripture has the Lord ever said, well, y'all on your own, y'all on your own, this is going to be so bad, I just got to take a step back and we'll just, uh, we'll just let it all play out. Let's see what happens. Let's see how you do without me for a little while. The Lord will never leave you and he will never forsake you. The only one God ever forsook was his own son on the cross for you. He who was rich became poor, so you through his poverty might become rich. And what that means is, is Jesus paid it all on every level for you. God will never leave you and he'll never forsake you. Jesus did that for you. So in the middle of all this darkness and difficulty, don't you forget something, that God has great 
plans. He has great hope in store for you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And I've got to tell you, there's so much strength rising for you in the middle of this present evil. I have, I have, I have commands and plans from the Lord that they'll take anywhere from five to 10 years to fully see the fruition of them in the natural. Maybe the Lord will do it in a year. But what I want to say to you about this is, is there are plans. Do not shrink back on your plans. Continue. Hear the word of the Lord. Continue. Continue. Don't shrink back. Continue. Do what the Lord has called you to do. Don't shrink back. Do not get in fear. Do not get in fear. Continue. 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 Blessed are they who do not fear. There's a special silver lining for you and your family in this time. Now watch, here comes the unfolding of Bygate. Here comes the unfolding of all these special narratives. Here's the unfolding of all this. But if you have ears to hear it, there is hope. There is a shout. There is a righteous roar that the Lord is making for you right now. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. This is going to be a strange year. I'm, I'm actually very thrilled and excited to get to the other side of this year. And I don't mean that in a sense of let's get there as quick as we can. I just mean there's going to be a lot of rearranging, a lot of shaking. Much is happening. Industries will be impacted. We've said this. And look, can I, say, can I really just kind of square up with you guys? Can I say something to you? This is important. I don't prophesy things to pull a bunny out of a hat. I don't prophesy to say, see, we said it. There's the fulfillment. Woo, aren't we great? That is not why I do this. That is not why I do this. Do you know that I resisted the prophetic office for 20 years? 20 years. Do you know why? Because of all the goofiness out there in it. And I was in so many prophetic camps, saw things, did things, and was around it. And I just had to say, Lord, I don't. if that's what it is, I'm not interested. And the Spirit of the Lord confronted me one day and said, you must do this. You know what I've called you to do. And so let me say something to you. You're going to see a new wave of humility in the prophetic. Mark real prophets by their humility. By their humility, their teachability, and their ability to work with others. It's going to be strong. Mark them by their humility, not just their accuracy. Somehow we've let it go that it's okay to not be humble in the prophetic. That's a mistake. God is calling people to go deeper into the word of God. And there's some prophets that are going to be venerated and justified and showed that they stood strong through the whole thing. It's going to be powerful. And I love all of them and I pray for them. But please, please hear me. Jesus is going to bring so much strength to those that are obedient, <clears throat> to those that stand firm in this time. He's going to bring strength and great victory. Strength and great victory to those that fear his name above all else. So it's going to be strong. It's true. Uh, when we talk about prophecy, this is the number one book of prophecy you need. You need this. And any other word that I speak or anybody else speaks, listen to me strongly. If you're new to this kind of stuff, the prophetic, whatever, you read this book until it starts talking back to you. What do I mean? Until it overwhelms your mind, your will, your emotions, and the word of God comes alive inside you. There's a difference between the prophetic and prophets, okay? Being prophetic doesn't make someone a prophet. The difference is called responsibility. Responsibility is the difference. Responsibility. A prophet is a prophetic person with a responsibility to do exactly what the Lord told them to do. They're assigned to a segment of the body of Christ. They're assigned to a group of people. They're assigned to a job, okay? And for in ours, number one, we're assigned to a media audience and we're assigned to certain people within the body of Christ. But mark the prophets by their humility and then also mark them by their false humility. Sounds crazy, but it's true. Man, it's, I'd rather take somebody that's loud and bold over false humility. False humility is that thing where they, they know they need to say the right thing. They know they need to do the right thing, but they're saying all the right things on the outside, but their heart is not with you. Their heart is not in it. And uh, that's a hard discernment. I'm not looking to do a spirit of suspicion. 
That's not what I'm looking at or trying to induce here. But let me just say to you, Jesus wants you to begin to build a foundation on his written word, build it up in faith, build it in prayer. And yes, heed the voice of the prophets, heed the voice of the word of God. And there's many good voices that are prophesying right now, but take it, take my words and everybody's words through the lens of the written word of God. If it can't stand up with scripture, back up. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Get a checkup from the neck up, right? <laughs> That's what the Lord is saying to many people right now. Praise God. Listen, Jesus loves you. There's nothing you can do about that, but you need to cooperate with him. God is calling you to a higher walk. There's going to be a right sizing doctrinally. And now I know the whole body of Christ can't unify just over doctrine, but there's going to be much right sizing in doctrine. You're going to see that now. You're going to see a right sizing on foundational truth. You're going to see a right sizing in many of these areas. And there's going to be another wave of truth and victory. And there's another round coming for the United States and your precious nation, wherever you're watching from. There's another round coming. I have a promise in my heart about it. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how dark it gets in this season and the following, it was dark in Egypt, but it was light in Goshen. And you carry the light of Goshen in you. You carry the light of Goshen in you. And here's a mark this word. There's going to be many people that you thought were villains that stand up and you find out they were heroes. And there's going to be many people that you thought were heroes and you're going to find out they were villains or you're going to find out they were corrupt. God is bringing such clarity. And here's the answer. The answer is the conclusion when all has been heard is fear God and keep his commandments. Get in the word of God. Love your brothers and sisters. Make Jesus Christ your Lord. And if you haven't done that, you need to do that right now. You say, Jesus, save me. In this ministry, if you just say simply, Jesus, save me. Now, it's it's more than that. But I'll tell you, if your heart says, I want Jesus to save me, you email us at josephz.com. And our partners will send you free material over eight hours of teaching on what you got. When you said, Jesus, save me, you just go ahead and email us at josephz.com. And I believe the Lord is bringing such great power to you, okay? And, and we want to give you that. Our partners make that available. And if you are a partner here, thank you for partnering with us. If you want to become a partner, you go to josephz.com. Partner today because we are taking the fight to a generation and we're going to save and rescue those staggering off to the slaughter. I have more news to bring, more information to get out there. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for partnering with us. You do that at josephz.com. we got the app, the Joseph Z app. You can download it, get information there in case one day we're not here. You can find us there. And this, this will be up on YouTube today. It'll be everywhere and all this. I want to say something to you. A lot of people are saying things and they're saying things out of their own ideology, out of their own environment, out of their own philosophies. But the word of God, if you can't prove it with the word of God, that's the only foundation we need to stand on right now. And God's going to bring it back to that. Everything else is going to get shaken. I got to tell you though, I have such hope. There's such hope. There's such hope. Jesus is Lord. And it's time that we begin to really make him Lord. One says, I'm of Paul. One says, I'm of Apollos. One says, I'm of Christ. But there's no other camp than Christ Jesus. So I'm on assignment right now. So be praying for me. Thank you for praying for me. The Lord sends me out on assignment. We were traveling and the Lord truly spoke to me and said, stop. I need you to go speak to some wonderful friends. And uh, we're doing that. And I just, I have such a love for the people that the Lord so graciously unites me with. And I'm, I'm excited about it. So I have so much we're going to share uh, coming up soon. And we got some great announcements coming for you. Keep watching. Thank you for being here. If you would repost this, share this and tell somebody about it. I believe that God is going to make such a great wave of awakening through you. I have a stirring in my spirit and I want to, I'll be sharing more on it this week. I have such a stirring in my spirit because I believe that the light in Goshen is shining. And also I have this book, Breaking Hell's Economy. I encourage you to get it because it's a prophetic word about what we're doing right now, what the Lord is doing right now. It's a prophetic word. I encourage you to get it. Breaking Hell's Economy. Uh, you can get it at josephc.com or any platform, any, any bookstore. And uh, please leave us a nice review. I love you guys. I really do. We really do. Jesus is Lord. We got so much to get into. Thank you for sharing this so more people can see it and find it. This will be on about 20 platforms today. 
and we're we're growing into things. Got a lot of cool announcements to tell you about. Thank you for being here. Please repost this. Would you share this? Show it to someone. Thank you for partnering at josephz.com. We just want to reach more people, and that's the deal. Reaching millions, we want to reach a lot more, and just so grateful for you. Watch for the unification of platforms. The merging is beginning. The Lord spoke to me that the merging would begin, gave me some signs about it. They've happened. And now I'm looking at how this merging is taking place. And I believe that I'm a catalyst and an agent to bring platforms together. And so we can see great, great victory for the body of Christ. And uh, not ever, <laughs> not ever with compromise, with truth. Praise God. We sure love you. Jesus is Lord. Thank you for being here. And remember, if nobody told you today, we love you. And God is with you. And on a bad day, you're called to be the best there is. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we love you. Anyway, please repost this everywhere. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for sharing this. And uh, thank you, partners. If, you, if you're here and you're watching and you just say, man, I just only want to watch. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being a prayer partner. And thank our partners for all their support. I love you so much. Jesus is Lord. I'll see you again very soon. God bless you guys. Bye, everyone.